Hello and welcome back. You're watching Perry This. Today we are looking at the man himself, Conrad Kieser, oftentimes known as the Da Vinci of Medieval Times. This man appears in the medieval historical RPG Kingdom Come Deliverance by Warhorse Studios, and he's there to help the heroes build a trebuchet, which, as you will learn in this video, is something he could do blindfolded, in his sleep, with his hands tied behind his back. Well, perhaps not that simple, but this man was a genius, so we are going to shine some light on this lesser known marvel of an engineer. So let's just get to it and dive on in. So let's go all the way back to the beginning for this one, since unlike flashy Hollywood directors, I find that is almost always the best place to start. Konrad Kieser was born in August of 1366 in the city of Eichstadt, Germany. Unlike many historical figures we have covered, his entire life is overshadowed by his great achievements, so history focuses far more on them. He is particularly famous for his Compendium of Knowledge that he published in 1405, known as the Bellefortis. This book is commonly referred to as a book on siege engines, but it is really so much more than that. But we will have to get into that later, because I would first like to talk a bit about the man behind the machine. It isn't actually clear how Conrad Kieser's life begins or what his background was before engineering. Being born into a small and mostly insignificant family in a small town in Germany, this genius's life could have passed into obscurity like so many others have before and after him. But that would not be Conrad's fate. Most historians agree that he was either a military captain or a physician, but one thing we know for certain is that he was certainly a military veteran with a fine technical mind. He is widely known to have served King Sigismund of Hungary's behalf in what is widely known as the Last Crusade. Despite not actually being the last war that would be called a crusade, it was the last major offensive crusade of note in medieval Europe. In any case, he is reported to have been present at the Battle of Nicopolis. Unfortunately, the battle was a military and tactical disaster, and this is where the crusade would be crushed. After this defeat, Kieser would flee back to his home at Eichstadt. Inspired by his experiences and the loss at Nicopolis, he would begin work on the Bellafortis in 1402, with the intent of showing the world how wars should be fought. It is important to note that Conrad was not the only one who believed the world and the wars fought therein were changing in many ways. Warfare was changing in the early 15th century Europe. Missile weapons were becoming more powerful, in the form both of better bows and of gunpowder technology. Professional mercenaries were increasingly important, particularly in Italy, where they went by the title of Condottiere. These ways of warfare emphasized specialist skills and knowledge. Professionals saw technical expertise replacing traditional chivalric values, although the aristocracy disagreed. These changes were perhaps only overshadowed by what would become known as the rise of professionalism, or, more specifically, the rise of paper. This time is predicated by the rise of technical manuals, which is what in many ways kicked off the amazing technological boom that would lead to most renaissance inventions. Books on war were increasingly popular among those wealthy enough to be able to purchase them. They ranged from Geoffrey de Charnay's Book of Chivalry, through books of tournament rules, to passage from classical works like Vegetius de Re Militari, Men such as Kieser and the Italian fighting master Fior de Liberi wrote books for this market. As well as sources of income, they were meant to show off the author's skills and to attract wealthy patrons. Quite possibly the most attractive thing about Kieser's work at the time were his illuminations. If you do not know what that means, it is actually quite simple. It is just an early terminology used to describe what we would call illustrations. So, unlike many other treatises, manuals, compendiums, and insights, Conrad Kieser's were accompanied by detailed pictures that showed examples, step-by-step -step instructions, and other useful images that made his ingenious methods and inventions understandable to any level of engineer and possibly even the layman. He acquired two skilled illustrators to help him demonstrate the points he was making. Others copied their images and provided insights into Kieser's thinking and warfare at the time. Some of these illustrations give us realistic examples of late medieval armor, early gunpowder weapons, and the construction of siege machines. Others show the wild fancies of an innovator caught up in his own imagination. Although some of his methods would be rejected at the time, as things progressed, he would become well regarded as quite possibly the most talented and knowledgeable engineer ever. So now that we have established a bit about the man himself, let's get into his magnum opus, the Bellefortis. The illustrations in this book reveal much about the man behind it. They show Kieser to be a man fascinated by the potential of technology. For example, there are horse-drawn battle wagons, 
novel gun designs, and devices for prying open drawbridges. He uses technology for everything, from greater firepower to fighting underwater. This focus on technology was actually groundbreaking at the time. Most medieval thinkers were focused almost solely on the reliability of precedent, preferring to stick to the tried and true methods and avoid innovation at nearly any cost. And most contemporary thinkers attributed success in war to individual skill and courage, and not the tools with which wars were fought. By modern standards, this is of course ridiculous, but at the time, it made perfect sense. So, as I mentioned earlier, this fantastic book is widely known as a book on siege engines. And, as I said, it is so much more. But, that reputation is understandable, since a very large portion of the book is centered around siege engines. And, to be honest, that really shouldn't be all that surprising, considering how prominent castles and other types of fortified structures were in medieval warfare. It should be expected that siege engines would be Kieser's primary focus. Up till many of the innovations designed by Kieser, vast machines and mining operations were crucial to penetrating towns and castles. However, Kieser, a man who must have been known for his ability to one-up everyone, really evolved upon nearly every known siege machine. There are illustrations of a range of machines to bombard defenses, from rock-flinging trebuchets to bolt throwers. Ropes and hooks to attach ladders to walls are shown, as well as innovative ideas including a hooked device for forcing down an enemy drawbridge. There is also something to be said for Kieser's interest in going on the offensive. There are also machines designed for battlefield attacks. With these, Kieser tackled the great military challenge of the day, which was the rise in power of infantry. Traditional heavy cavalry charges were becoming less effective due to the increase of defensive formations such as the spear-armed Schiltram and the longbow block. New ways were needed to break infantry formations. Kieser's solutions included a human threshing machine, similar to da Vinci's more macabre designs. Powered by a human operator, its many blades were meant to slice through ranks of men like a scythe through corn. Whether or not Kieser thought the device realistic, it was never seen in battle. But could you imagine such a horror if such a device in medieval times existed? After learning about such things, I wonder how the average soldier viewed Kieser. As a madman or a genius? In any case, we all know that the line between the two is often very thin and cloudy. However unrealistic that last one may be, Kieser also developed many designs for guns, grenades, and even tanks. And I would like to remind you once again that this was in 1405. In hindsight, Kieser's ideas for gunpowder are more realistic, although many may have been looked as just fanciful for the time. For guns, he considered the rate of fire and stability. Multi-barreled machines were designed to allow multiple shots in quick succession. Defense for gunners enabled them to reload without distraction in an era when reloading took at least a minute and left the gunner vulnerable to attack. To make guns more stable and accurate, he suggested platforms and supports. One of Kieser's ideas was a mobile gun platform with an outer shell, a precursor to the principles of the modern tank. With its wooden walls, it would have been vulnerable to fire, but it offered a solution to the immobility of powerful gunpowder weapons. Bombs and grenades just coming into use drew Kieser's attention. He provided suggestions for gunpowder production to ensure the power of gunpowder weapons. So, while many people were still strapping on plate armor and developing new sword designs, Conrad Kieser was designing tanks, rapid-fire guns, and handheld explosive devices similar to modern grenades. Kieser was also an innovator in the area of aquatic problem solving. This should come as no surprise considering how in the Battle of Nicopolis, many of the problems that led to their defeat were related to a water problem, that being the need to cross a river. In his book, he designed many devices to try and combat aquatic defenses, both natural and man-made. These included bridging devices designed to quickly and easily overcome moats and rivers. In addition to this, he also designed new types of water pumps and water wheels, which could power siege engines as well as non-military applications like mining, which would benefit greatly from these innovations. And quite possibly most impressive of all were his fantastic concepts for a suit that would allow men to walk underwater. Of course, this would never be anything that he would put into practice, but his ideas would inspire others and much later would lead to modern day diving and scuba gear. So it is very important to note that many of the things he designed or suggested offer logistical solutions for a wide variety of applications, and not simply more efficient ways to kill people. Despite his inclination to innovation, Kieser had to look to the past to legitimize his work. 
He did this by regularly citing the example of Alexander the Great, even suggesting that new ideas came from this ancient and respected monarch. The image of Alexander had clearly caught Kieser's attention, and he hoped that this would appeal to his audience as well. And for those of you who have played Kingdom Come Deliverance, you may remember this, as in the game he suggested out loud how much more Alexander the Great would have accomplished with Riketa. Kieser had a mind of a great military innovator. However, as warfare changed, he had to maintain the pretense of tradition to sell his work. Belafortis was a military manual, but it was also an advertisement, to pitch to those who might want to hire the mind behind it. That strange and macabre technical mind of Conrad Kieser. As an interesting note, related to some of the more obscure depictions in the Belafortis, the diving suit presented in the book has precedence reaching back to the 12th century and to Roger Bacon. The book also has the earliest known depiction of a chastity belt. Kieser counts the arts magicae among the mechanical arts, and his works contain various applications of magic in warfare. So despite his apparent mechanical engineering genius, he also had several that would be considered at that time and this time to be ridiculous by many. Another fun, interesting historical note is that although he originally intended to dedicate the Belafortis to King Wenceslaus IV, he would grow bitter in his exile and end up instead dedicating it to one of Wenceslaus's political rivals, Rupert, King of Germany, also known as Rupert of the Palatinate. He emphasizes in the dedication the relationship of technical knowledge to technical skills. He writes of the German soldiers, Just as the sky shines with stars, Germany shines forth with liberal disciplines, is embellished with mechanics, and adorned with diverse arts. At the end of his treatise, Kieser gives a markedly unusual appearance of himself. He portrays himself as a dying, worried person. He even provides his own epitaph. May my soul be joined to your very high one. As far as Conrad Kieser's legacy goes, many of his innovations and designs would be produced and used throughout history and would play a part in the Hussite Wars in Bohemia. In addition to this, many of his illustrations and designs would be directly copied into later manuscripts. The most famous are the Thought Manuscript of Hans Tellhofer of the 15th century, but there are editions of Vegectius de Re Militari from 1535 in Latin and 1536 in French that contain pictures clearly copied from the Bellifortis with more up-to-date clothing for the soldiers, to augment the original text only treatise by Vegetius. In the Renaissance in Italy, Bellifortis was well known and widespread. The result of new research shows that, also, Leonardo da Vinci knew the work of Kieser and that several of Leonardo's technical illustrations are based on the Bellifortis. So that is all I'm going to say about Conrad Kieser today. If you hadn't ever learned about this man before, especially if you have studied engineering, then you have been failed by your education system. If I missed anything you deem important, I invite you to share your thoughts in the comments section below. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.